Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R730 and specifically we're going to focus on Windows operating systems. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, so today we're going to go over uh, Windows operating systems for the uh, R730. Uh, first off, let's just cover which ones are compatible, uh, 2008 R2, 2012, uh, 2012 R2, 2016, uh, 2019 LTSC. Uh, do note all these are server operating systems. Obviously you can't use just a standard Windows like desktop operating system. Uh, everything needs to be a Windows server operating system. Okay, uh, now we're going to actually show you how to install it. Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Windows Server 2016 on your Dell R730. So we're going to do this one of two ways. One, we're going to install it directly onto the R730, one of the drives on the R730, and we are also going to install it um, as a virtual machine on VMware, which is running on our R730. So first of all, I'm going to show you guys how to install it on one of your drives on your R730. So let's get started. All right. So before we start our local installation of Windows Server, there are a couple things we're going to need. First of all, we want to make sure we have some type of storage space that will be available for our installation. This can be an external or USB drive, an M.2 SSD that's plugged in through a PCIe to M.2 adapter, or it could be a SAS or SATA drive that is plugged into the backplane. For our case, we will be using a SATA drive plugged into the backplane. The other thing that we're going to need to install is, well, the operating system itself. So you guys can go to the link below and download um, a 64-bit ISO file of Windows Server 2016. Um, you can get it directly from uh, Windows website, and we're going to need this ISO file so we can go ahead and do the installation. So once you install that ISO file, you can go ahead and move that to a USB drive and then plug it into the R730. One thing I do want to note is that the actual installation process of Windows Server 2016 does not require an active internet connection to the server. Now when actually installing the file, um, you can do this on a laptop um, or a desktop. This will need an active internet connection since you're going directly to um, a website to install the file. But once you have the file on your USB drive, you will not need an active internet connection on the server itself to do the installation. So since we've covered everything that we need to actually get into the installation. So first of all, you just want to go ahead and start booting up your R730. So during post, you can press F11 and this will enter the boot manager. All right, so now we're in boot manager. What we want to do is go ahead and click on one shot UEFI boot me menu. All right, so in here, this may look a little bit different just depending on the devices you have installed, but we just want to select the, the device or the disk that represents our USB drive. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And what this will do is that it will automatically start up the Windows Server 2016 installation. So the good thing about this installation is that it's pretty straightforward, you know, once we start this process. Really, it's just going through the forms and just selecting, you know, whatever looks right and moving through for that. But I'm still gonna walk you through it and just let you know the process. So first it's just gonna ask us for the language. So we're gonna go ahead and do English and then we're gonna go click next and then install now. Um, and I would like to say that this installation does take a little bit of time. So right here, we're gonna choose the specific operating system that we want to do. But for this, we're gonna do desktop experience. It, it's, it all depends on the user um, and what you would like, but for our purposes, we're gonna do desktop experience. And then we just want to accept the license terms down here. And once we've accepted the license term, click next. So for this screen, what we are going to do is that we're gonna do a custom install. You want to do this if you're doing a fresh installation of Windows, but if not, if you're doing an upgrade from a previous version of Windows, you're going to want to do that first option. So here we can see the drive we have installed. This is where we're going to actually install the operating system onto. So once we have that selected, we can click next. And this is really where it's going to start actually putting the files, and downloading and installing all the Windows files onto our drive. So for this, all we got to do is just wait it out. And we'll go ahead and fast forward for you guys.
Okay, and then what it's going to do is that it's going to reboot our R730. So we'll let it go through that. All right, so once your R730 boots back up, it will automatically boot into Windows Server 2016. Okay, so we'll just give it some time. And a lot of the installation process is just waiting around, you know, waiting for the installation to do its thing. But overall, it's pretty straightforward. So once Windows is done booting up, it'll ask us some initial setup questions. So it'll ask us to create a password. So we're going to go ahead and put in a password. This can be whatever you want it to be. And then you just want to re-enter the password. I'm going to click finish. All right. So now that we've entered in that password, you can see that it actually just booted into Windows. So you want to press Control Alt Delete to unlock, and it'll prompt you to enter that password you just created. So go ahead and enter in that password, and then you can log in. And there we have it. We have successfully installed Windows Server 2016 on our R730, and we have fully installed. So we now have a working version of Windows Server 2016. Isn't that cool? So next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you how to install it on a virtual machine. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to install Windows Server 2016 on a virtual machine using VMware, um, which we have installed on our R730. So for this, we're going to be using two M.2 NVMe drives, uh, which are installed through a PCIe to M.2 adapter. We are also going to be using a laptop that is connected to the same network as our R730. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we are going to do is enable X4, 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 X4 slot bifurcation um, in our R730's BIOS. So upon boot, during post, you want to go ahead and press F2 so we can enter the system setup. So once we are in system setup, we want to go to system BIOS settings and go down to integrated devices. We want to scroll all the way down to slot bifurcation. So this screen might look a little bit different just depending on where you have your adapter installed, but ours is in slot four. So you want to go ahead and click X4, 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 X4 bifurcation. And once we do that, we can just go ahead and exit this screen or this menu. And then we want to save all of our changes. And then we'll go ahead and reboot our R730. So now what we want to do is that we want to log in to the VMware web interface for our system. And once we go in here, we want to go to the storage tab and create a new data store. So next we're going to go ahead and give the data store a name. So this could be whatever you would like. And then we're going to click next. So on this screen, we're going to go ahead and leave the default settings and then we'll click finish and then yes. So if we have created our first data store, so we're going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to go to the data store browser. We're going to create a new directory. And then this is going to be a directory where we're going to put all of our ISO files. So we're going to click create directory. And we're going to name this directory ISOs. And this is where we're going to put all of our installation files. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on this ISO file and click upload. And it's going to bring us to our file explorer. And then you just want to go to the location that you have the Windows Server ISO file installed. And you just want to go ahead and select it and upload it to this ISOs folder. So the upload might take a little bit of time. Uh, so we'll go ahead and fast forward that. We are actually going to set up our virtual machine. So on the left side of the screen, we want to do create slash register VM. And we just leave this as is, so click Next. We want to put in a name for our uh, virtual machine. So like I said, this can be you know whatever you want. And then right here, we're going to select a guest OS family. So it'll be Windows. And then here, we're going to select the version. So this is going to be the Windows Server 2016 64-bit. But we'll just go do Next. And we want to cl click the data store that we just created and click Next. And this is where we're going to go ahead and actually allocate all of our hardware. So we can pick out how much memory, you know, how much hard disk space we want it to take up. So here we want to go down to CD DVD Drive 1, 
and click the drop down and do data store ISO file. So we'll click on our data store that we create and click on the ISOs folder and then the ISO file. So then we can click next. And then this will just be an overview of the whole virtual machine, all of the options, and then click finish. Our virtual machine has been created. So if we go to the virtual machines um, on the left side and click our virtual machine that we created, we can go ahead and press power on and then we'll click console and then open browser console. And then this will pretty much just be a screen of our virtual machine so we can actually see the operating system. So we'll just give it a second while it loads and boom, you can see that Windows is now booting up. And just like the installation we did where we uh, installed it directly to the R730, it'll take us through the same installation. The only difference is, is that it will be on a, a virtual machine. So we'll go through the installation process. We'll go ahead and just fast forward through this process. It's pretty much the exact same process as before. So if you wanted to you know, watch that part of the video again, I recommend doing so. But that is it. That is how you install Windows Server 2016 one on your R730 and two on a virtual machine. So once we're pretty much done with this, we're gonna create that password like we did earlier, um, and then we can actually log in. So that's it. If you guys found this video useful, please leave a like and smash that subscribe. We also do build custom servers, so if you're interested in getting a, a custom R730, you can go ahead and go to our website, or you can contact us at sales at cloudninjas.com. And again, guys, thank you for stopping by.